Hey everyone, it is June 26th today and it is a bit of a special day because a year ago today I submitted my resignation notice to my full-time job. So it has been a full year since I've made the decision or implemented the decision to leave work. Of course I stayed a couple more months, but this was the day that kind of like set this year into motion and I wanted to reflect a little bit about that. Overall I feel pretty amazing. I'm planning to do a more in-depth video on the changes that I've noticed since leaving work and of course I left a place of employment that was very good to me but I just didn't feel like I could be myself there so this won't be true for everyone who leaves his or her place of of employment but for me the changes have been very very positive of course it's not all rainbows and unicorns I still have my worries I still think about you know what I'm going to be doing in the future but overall the shift in my personality and I think the way I deal with people and my interactions with people have improved dramatically. I've been thinking recently about whether or not I am truly introverted. My friends and family are often surprised when I say I'm introverted because I guess I am very outgoing around people that I'm comfortable with and people that um, I just feel like I can be myself with. I also came across a term maybe a year or two ago called ambivert, which is kind of like the middle of the road between introvert and extrovert. And when I read about the characteristics of an ambivert, I think I fit it pretty well, but I'm not sure if everyone feels that way. So maybe I'll leave a link down below and you can let me know if the characteristics of an ambivert you feel describe yourself. So this leads me to what I did today. Today my tasks per the Ivy Lee method were to take the 16 personalities test again. I also wanted to vlog. The third thing I wanted to do is work on my third memoir and actually finalize that. I am going ahead with the 52 memoirs project. Down the road I may share the blog but right now I'm just gonna keep it private. And then I did have a fourth thing on my list but if I don't get to it it's okay and that is to start editing the um, nails video. I still have my long nails but this one here, this nail here is a little bit shorter than the rest. I didn't actually break it but when I was slicing onions I guess I was distracted and I cut through the nail and then I had to um, file it down. They are starting to get a bit too long though. I feel like they're getting in the way or maybe I'm just not used to them being this long but I keep like poking myself and scratching myself accidentally and one time I kind of like poked Truffle by accident near his eye oh that really freaked me out speaking of Truffle we had to bring him to the vet again I actually brought him on my own on Monday because hubby was working and he couldn't get his shift changed so I brought him on Monday he is having tooth issues again he wasn't eating over the weekend so I was feeding him critical care all weekend I was feeding him like six times a day and for the most part he was so agreeable with the critical care we didn't have to pick him up or hold him down that much he just would come to me and I would syringe feed him and then he would like hop away when he had had enough so it was really good because I knew by his cues whether or not he was hungry if he was hungry he would keep following me and then when he was full he would like turn his back or he would hop away. He was really good but of course that's not sustainable. We want him to be eating on his own. So we brought him to the vet and he got his teeth trimmed again. Apparently some rabbits do need their teeth trimmed every like four to six weeks or so but we've really lucked out with Truffle. He hasn't had too many issues with his teeth, knock on wood, but now that he's a little bit older maybe he's not eating as much and his teeth aren't grinding down as much as a result. So who knows, we may have to take him more frequently. That was a really, really long um, diversion. But back to today, because I was wondering about the introversion, I decided to do the 16 personalities test again. I actually did the Myers-Briggs personality test way back when and I shared the results on this vlog and then I went ahead and I did 16 personalities and the personality tests actually lined up. So I think 16 personalities is a pretty good reflection of the Myers-Briggs. Before today, I did 16 personalities, I think twice, and both times I got the same results as Myers-Briggs, which is INFJ. Today, I decided to do it again and really look at the questions because I was wondering whether or not I am truly introverted. 
so the results today were very interesting because I am still introverted, but instead of INFJ this time, I got INFJ. P. J stands for judging and P stands for perceiving. In the 16 personalities, they call it judging and prospecting, but it's the same concept. So judging is basically someone who is very organized, likes to follow a schedule, and is a little more rigid in the way they run their lives. And then perceiving or prospecting is um, a more flexible personality type, um, likes to go with the flow a little bit more. And the reason I find this really interesting, the change since I've left work, is that I've actually noticed this in myself. I used to love making plans and sticking to the plans, being very organized and very methodical with my days. And while I did just implement a daily to-do list, it's because I was kind of too flexible. So I felt like I needed to rein myself in. Whereas before, because my personality was so organized and methodical, I never really needed to-do lists because it was all in my mind and I could motivate myself to tackle things one by one and keep focused and organized and really um, have the day play out the way I intended. Now I feel like I'm completely different. I'm sure I'm not completely, completely different, but it feels like night and day for someone who used to be so organized and methodical. So this result kind of surprised me, but not really. I'm going to pull up my results from last time when I landed on INFJ, which I think I've been for years and years and years. And I'm gonna see if um, the percentages have changed. I did spend a bit of time reading about INFJ versus INFP. Even though people confuse themselves between INFJ and INFP, apparently they are quite different. Their functional stacks are completely different. For the most part, I would say I identify more with INFJ, but there are some aspects of INFP that are like, oh, that could be me, or that seems more like me than the INFJ description. I last did 16 personalities in October of 2017, and when I did the test back then, I was 83% introverted versus 65% when I did the test today. I was also 55% intuitive versus 62% today. 67% feeling versus 82% today. I've really kind of moved the needle on that. And then I was 85% judging versus 51% prospecting today. For the most part, the shifts weren't enough to shift the letters except for the fourth preference pair. So I found this really interesting and I would say that how I feel internally and my analysis of myself and my own personality, it mirrors what um, the results showed. Hey everyone, I have met Puppy, and we are heading to happy hour. I'm wearing my uniform as of late. Uh, these are my key sunglasses. These are my favorite earrings as of late. I'm also wearing a black tank top, unique low jeans, and black Converse, and of course, a black crossbody bag. We are heading to craft Market. Good morning everyone, it is Thursday today and hubby and I had a really good time at Craft. We've been enjoying happy hour lately just because it's a lot cheaper. It's also at an off time, it's usually like 2 to 5 or something along those lines, so we like it a little bit less busy. We've been enjoying going out a little bit more lately, we usually just get a little something, we haven't really had like a nice sit down dinner. We're thinking in warmer weather we might do a nice sit down dinner once a month, but otherwise we're just gonna go for these like inexpensive and quick and easy meals and tonight we are going to the Bentway. The Bentway is doing a collaboration with Depaneur. Depaneur is where I got that Sri Lankan food a few vlogs ago and they're having these like themed dinners under the Gardner Expressway. Tonight's theme is Syrian food and the menu's already been posted online and it looks fantastic. The other place we tried recently that I wanted to talk about is a tempura place. It's called Akumitsu. It specializes in tendon which are tempura bowls, so tempura on a bed of rice. I was really excited because I recall very fondly this tempura restaurant that we tried in Tokyo 
or maybe it was Osaka and it was amazing. You got this tempura set and they would give you all of the stuff except for the tempura, so the rice and the pickles and like all these little small bowls of stuff. And then they would make the tempura for you at a bar. They made it fresh one or two pieces at a time and when they presented it to you, you would eat those pieces. When you're done eating those one or two pieces, the chefs would make you one or two more pieces and then you would eat those until you got X number of tempura that came with your set. So when I heard that there was a tempura restaurant, I was so excited. We went last weekend and I thought it was just okay. We got two tempura bowls and they were filling, but they were pretty small. There was a lot of rice in there, which is probably why they were filling. The flavors were really nice, but the texture of the rice we found was a bit mushy. And then the tempura itself didn't really blow us away. The restaurant is pretty new though, so maybe we'll try it again down the road if we're craving tempura. It got great reviews though, so maybe it just doesn't suit my taste on Yelp, but seemed like a lot of people liked it. I am using my Woodland Creatures mug and I am drinking black tea, just plain black tea, no milk, no sugar, and it is just like a standard black tea. My husband's coworker bought this for him some time ago. She went back home to Sri Lanka for a visit and she came back with this for us. I've been drinking this almost every day and this stuff is great for bulletproof tea as well. These are just tea bags and you can see how much we've drank already, mostly me. The reason I was questioning whether or not I am as introverted as I thought I was was that whole thing about where you get your energy from, whether you get your energy from being alone versus with other people. And I would say that, especially if I'm with a group of people that I know and that I'm comfortable with, I definitely get a lot of energy from them. If I'm by myself, I do tend to get tired a little bit quicker. I'll go to bed early. I sometimes lack motivation, even though it is relatively easy for me to motivate myself. I go through a lot of ups and downs when I'm by myself, whereas when I'm with people, especially people, like I said, that I'm comfortable with, I have so much energy and I can stay up until the wee hours. I can stay up until like five or six o'clock if we're just like talking or playing games or this or that. I just have a lot of fun. I'm more extroverted when I'm with people that I know very well that I'm comfortable with, but I'm more introverted when I'm with a bunch of people I don't know, especially if there are a lot of people around. Like those networking parties are my worst nightmare. I am terrified in those types of situations. I can still come across as being like open, friendly, extroverted, but inside it's like complete and utter turmoil at those types of events. The other thing that leads me to is I've always identified as an introvert, so maybe just the act of identifying as one has made me become more introverted. Kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy where if you say you're a certain way, you're more inclined to act a certain way. So as hard as I try not to put labels on myself, I think I still do put a lot of labels on myself and as a result, I box myself in. So that's the other draw of the ambivert definition. It's kind of like you can be one way in one situation, but another way in another situation because human beings are adaptable and multi-dimensional and even though it's fun to see where you fall on Myers-Briggs, read about your personality type and all of that, it is rather limiting and I wouldn't want any of us, myself included, to feel like I was in a box and that one personality type could define me to a T. That's what I'm finding really interesting as I'm reading about the different personality types. I can definitely see that in certain situations, I'm more of an INFJ. In other situations, I'm more of an INFP. Maybe I need to just let go of these labels. I am going to finish my tea, have a light um, breakfast slash lunch, and then I am off to consonant. My friend and I were supposed to go to a kombucha making workshop yesterday and I definitely goofed on this because I thought it would be at their regular location where they always have the workshops. My friend and I have gone to a number of things there together 
I didn't look at the address, but it turns out that this workshop was being held at a different location and we showed up at the Queen Street location and nothing was happening there and we were told that we were at the wrong place. Unfortunately, we missed out on the workshop because we didn't want to like make our way to Young and Eglinton and show up really late, but I still am going to pick up our SCOBY. So SCOBY is like that starter. It's kind of like a sourdough starter, but it's for kombucha. I'm going to pick that up and learn about how to do it online and hopefully still be able to make kombucha. I'm back from Consonant. It is so hot out. It feels just like a lazy summer day. I'm also getting our bento boxes ready to bring to the Bentway. These have come in so handy. Hubby and I have eaten out on the terrace several times already. These have been indispensable. So let me just set these aside and show you what we got from Consonant. These are so heavy and that's because the SCOBYs have been stored in these mason jars filled with liquid. They look very healthy. There's so much in this one. We also got this recipe and they gave us a bunch of consonant samples which is really nice my friend again didn't want her samples she actually gives me most of her samples because she doesn't use them so i have two sets of everything we've got the hydric stream which i love and then there's a little pamphlet of their products and some cleansing cloths these are awesome there are 10 cloths in here. So I have two huge scobies now because my friend actually didn't want hers. I went to meet her to show her her scoby and she wasn't planning to keep it in the first place because she knew that um, she probably wouldn't use it. She basically wanted to just keep me company at the workshop, which was really sweet of her. So I ended up with um, both of the scobies and I have them on the countertop now and I'm reading all about them. I was planning not to make kombucha for a while, but it sounds like to keep my scoby healthy, I do need to consistently be making batches. So I am going to give it a try, maybe tomorrow because I don't have any plans for tomorrow. I have essentially the whole day to myself while my husband is working. I need to go out to get some steps at some point, but otherwise I can probably focus on um, trying to make kombucha. I think I'm gonna put the entire long weekend into this vlog because we do have some plans here and there. On Sunday, my friend and I are going to afternoon tea we're going to be celebrating our mid-year anniversary which is actually today the other thing i wanted to mention is that on monday my sister and her boyfriend were downtown and we went to juicy dumpling again juicy dumpling basically serves very inexpensive but tasty siulong bao which are soup dumplings you can get six soup dumplings for $2.99, which is incredible. It's right in the heart of Chinatown at Dundas and Spadina. It's a really small eatery with a few tables, but the turnover is really fast, so you should be able to get a table. We've also tried the pan fried. We had the pork ones, and these ones come in a set of four for $3.99. When you're ordering, I think they are P3. They are bigger, and they have a thicker wrapper, and those are delicious as well. We are at the Bentway now and we're waiting for registration. It's a pretty cool setup. You can see behind me is the cooking area and the tables are back here. That dinner was so good. It was only $12 per person and there was so much food. Pilot Coffee was also a sponsor, so we got these coffees to go. I won't be sleeping tonight, but everything was delicious. The appetizer, the salad, the main course, the dessert, the coffee, of course. So, so good. We have one more coming up, which is the Momo one, and we may try to drop into another one. But we'll see. Good morning, everyone, or should I say good afternoon? I shouldn't have drank that coffee yesterday. I had two of them and I was up until around 6 a.m. I went to bed at 2.30 ish, but I just couldn't fall asleep. I was wired. So I surfed the internet for a bit and I played games for a bit. I read a bit and then I kind of just meditated, relaxed. 
Eventually, I fell asleep, but I still woke up quite early. I woke up around eight or nine o'clock. No matter, I am having fun with SCOBY. I should have opened these jars yesterday. They are open now. I just have the um, little lid resting on top. Since these are active, they do continue to ferment and there was quite a bit of carbonation. So they were very difficult to open and one actually kind of like splattered everywhere. I've cleaned it up since, but they do smell pretty ripe. Not necessarily a bad smell, just smells like fermentation. They are definitely active little puppies. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to brew the kombucha in these mason jars that we got from Consonant and I'm going to transfer the scobies into this pitcher which I've cleaned and sanitized. I just used some white vinegar and some boiling water and I rinsed out the inside. Before that, I did use soap to wash it out because it's been a while since we've used this pitcher. So hopefully this will be a clean enough environment for my scobies. And I'm also making some sweet tea right now. So this is the tea that I'm making. This is three and a half cups of tea with half a cup of sugar. You're supposed to let it sit to room temperature. It's been probably like half an hour or so. So this is still quite some time for it to cool down. For now, I'm going to work on transferring the SCOBY. It's been a few hours and I've made one batch. So I've got one of the SCOBY in here. My friend and I actually named our SCOBYs. Hers is called Gus and mine is called Penelope. Penelope ended up being multiple SCOBY. So I took one of them and I put them in here. You may recall that I pulled out one SCOBY from the first jar. He was really long and in one piece and that was Gus. So I'll probably have to cut him in order not to have too much SCOBY in with the liquid. But as soon as I put this SCOBY in, it started bubbling a little bit at the top. I think I did it properly. Hopefully it will turn out okay. But I am going to go ahead and pop this into a cupboard. I'm actually gonna put it into the cupboard up here above our fridge. I use my infrared thermometer and it's actually around 78-ish degrees up there Fahrenheit. So that is um, a pretty good temperature. I'm only going to ferment this for um, around six to seven days and then I'm gonna taste it. So we'll see how it goes. I forgot to vlog um, me assembling this. This is just a um, coffee filter on top, a Chemex filter and I've secured it with a rubber band. In here, I have the three and a half cups of brewed tea, the sweet tea. I also have um, a half cup of the starter liquid. So that is previously brewed kombucha that Consonant said I could use in this batch, my first batch. So I used um, Penelope's liquid and then I put the SCOBY in and then the coffee filter and then the elastic band. So relatively straightforward, nothing much to it. I'm going to make another batch now and I'm gonna use Gus or part of Gus to see if um, the kombucha reacts and tastes very different. Nastiness. 
It'll grow more too. Oh, when it's in the when it's in here, it'll grow. It grows a baby. It grows forever. They said you could throw away the mother's reed to make it into like skincare. Happy Canada Day, everyone! It was Canada Day yesterday, and I thought I would vlog all weekends, but I actually didn't end up vlogging at all. I wanted to tell you about two more restaurants that Hubby and I tried recently. Both are Japanese restaurants. One is an udon place that is called Raku, and it's actually a restaurant that is based out of New York. There are a couple branches in New York, and they just opened one here in Toronto. It is excellent. I actually love udon, much more so than ramen. I'm, I'm an okay fan of ramen, but udon is my ultimate favorite and this place is absolutely delicious i highly recommend it hubby and i are actually planning to go back very soon at raku hubby and i shared the cold noodles with dipping sauce we also got a couple of hot udon so hubby got the chicken curry udon and i got the kitsune which is my favorite udon to order we also tried a new ramen restaurant called hakara Ikusha, I think it's called. It's on Queen Street near Tombuku, and the ramen there was quite good as well. A little bit on the pricey side, they give you these forms where you order like by ticking off menu items, and if you add things to your ramen, it could easily go upwards of like $20 per bowl, which is kind of a lot. But the flavors were pretty good, and we liked that you could choose the firmness of the noodle. I think we would go back to that ramen shop, although if I had to choose choose a noodle soup right now, I would go to Raku. The hot udon also come in these giant bowls, which are a lot of fun. But anyway, I am going to end off the vlog here. I just went to watch a documentary called Ask Dr. Ruth, and it was pretty fantastic, very interesting. I remember listening to Dr. Ruth as a teenager, so it was fascinating seeing her story and what an icon she's become. Anyway, I am going to end off the vlog here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back very soon with another vlog, and I will see you all then. Happy Independence Day to those of you in the US. I hope you have a very happy and safe 4th of July celebration, and for all of you in Canada, I hope you had a lovely Canada Day. I We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.